Hi, grade 12s, and welcome to today's video where we are looking at XLOOKUP. Now, you might be asking, well, what is this? Now, it is one of the newest members of the LOOKUP family, and we are already familiar with the horizontal LOOKUP, or the H LOOKUP, and the vertical LOOKUP, the V LOOKUP. Okay, now I know grade 11s would have touched on the V lookup. In grade 12, we look at the V lookup and the H lookup, and we now add the X lookup as well. So it allows us to search for an item in a range or table and return a matching result. That seems fine. However, this is the big difference. If no match exists, then X lookup can actually return the closest approximate match now we know when it came to h lookup and our v lookup if there's no match it would just you know display an error or, or it would display blank whereas the x lookup can do both of those it can do what the h lookup can and the v lookup can but also in addition to that help us return the closest approximate match if there's nothing there if if it's not matching anything so let's go and take a practical look at this so before we jump into today's example, I think it's important just to look at the structure of the XLOOKUP as it differs from HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP. Now, our function name is obviously equals XLOOKUP. So we see that on the screen. And then we have a few arguments. The first being the lookup value. In other words, the value to search for. Okay, this is what we already have. It's required because if we omit this, XLOOKUP is going to return blank cells if it finds it in the lookup array. Our next argument is the lookup array. This is the array or the range to search. In other words, we, we take in what we have in the lookup value and where are we going to go and, you know, um, match it up. Where do we want to go and search or use this to search for something else? The next argument we have is the return array. The array or range to return. Okay, now remember in our H lookup and our V lookup, we would have our column index number and things like that. So this time we're looking at a return array. And then the last few. The first one is if not found. Now, this means that where a valid match is not found, it must return the if not found text that you supply. Okay, now it is optional if a valid match is not found and if the if not found is missing, you can put the, um, you know, hash n slash a for not applicable. Okay, then our last two arguments deal with matching. So the first one is match mode. And here we're going to specify the match type. Now, I think you'll remember with HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP, we would put true and false. Here we are going to say zero for an exact match, negative one for an exact match. But if nothing is found, it must return the next smaller number. So I'm going to repeat that. If I specify a zero, it must give me an exact match. And if no match is found, it must return the hash n slash a, right? This is going to be the default. If I put in a minus one, it must give me an exact match. But if none is found, it must return the next smaller item. If I put in a one, a normal positive one, right? I want an exact match. But if none is found, it must return the next larger number. And then if I put in the number two, um, this is where a wild, where we basically match in a wild card. Okay, where you, you know you have like your your asterisks, your your question mark, and those things um, that'll have a special meaning. And then our last item is the search mode, and here we specify the search mode to use. Again, a number one here will perform a search starting at the first item. This is the default. A negative one will perform a reverse search starting at the last item. And number two will perform a binary search that relies on the lookup array being sorted in ascending order. And the negative two will do exactly the same, except we're dealing with the descending order um, that it's going to be searching through. So it's important just to understand those things as we have a look at one or two examples now. OK, so having said all of that, let's go and have a look at a few examples before I take you practically through one. Years, the one that you see over here is a country abbreviation, the prefix. And in this example, we see X lookup is used to look up a country name in this range and then return its telephone country code. So we want to look up the country, but we actually want the prefix. It includes the lookup value. So our lookup value is going to be F2. That is what we have. 
Okay, and where are we going to go check up? The lookup uh, array is going to be our range B2 through to B11. So we take in what we have here and we want to go and search for um, it to match up over on this side, right? Once we've done that, we want to look at our return array. That's the range D2 to D11. So D2 to D11, because that's what we actually want. Remember in HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP, we would look at the, um, I've, I've mentioned it before, the column index number. This time it's your return array. Uh, it doesn't include the match mode argument as XLOOKUP produces an exact match by default. Okay, bear that in mind. So we can see the XLOOKUP, we're using F2, we're checking through this whole range for Brazil, and we want to match it up to the return array. Here's another one. We've got employee information. Now, unlike VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP can return an array with multiple items, so a single formula can return both the employee name and the department. So in this case, we're saying equals lookup, we take in B2, our employee ID, we want to check through the range B5 to B14. So B5 through to B14. Oh, sorry, B5 to B14. We're looking up that employee number or employee ID. And what do we want to return? We want to return C5 to D14, C5 over here to D14. So anything that matches up. In other words, when it looks at this employee ID number, it's going to match it up over there. It's going to bring up the employee name and the department. Okay. Here's another example. When we add if not found to the preceding example to this one, right? So if we add ID if not found, sorry, ID not found, then when we run that same function, it's going to check for the employee ID, see, okay, well, that employer is one, two, three, four. It's not here, doesn't match up with anything. Therefore, because of that argument, if not found, we will type in what we want to display. And in this case, it'll be ID not found. And then our last example, example four looks in column C for this max income for the personal income entered into cell E2. So we're looking at that income over there. It finds a matching tax rate in column B, All right? It sets the if not found argument to zero, right? So it must return a zero if nothing is found. Remember, we type in what it must return. The match mode argument is set to one, which means the function will look for an exact match. And if it can't find one, it will return the next larger item, which is what we went through earlier. Finally, the search mode argument is set to one which means the function will search from the list, sorry, from the first item in the list. Okay, let's let's go through this. So we're going equals X lookup. E2, this is what we have. This is our lookup value. We're then going to check our array. What are we, what are we looking to, you know, uh, compare this with? C2 to C7. So we want to look in max income to see if there's one that matches with this. What do we want? We, our return array is b2 to b7 because we want that tax rate and this is where it begins to change now so everything is fine then we're saying we set the if not found to zero because it must return zero if it doesn't find anything however when we also look at the match mode it's set to one which means if it doesn't find an exact match it looks for the next larger item now is there an exact match no so it's going to look for the next larger item. And we can see here between 39 and 84, it's going to go for the next larger item, which should be 24%. And guys, that is how they do it. So enough talking from me. Let's go and look at a practical example. Let's, let, let's go and do it together. We have this particular spreadsheet and we're in this um, particular worksheet over here. So I'm going to scroll down just to show you. Okay, so we have all of this. Now let's look at the question. Question says, make use of an appropriate lookup function in cell E63 to determine the name of the item referred to in question 4.6. So that was getting this answer. Now, what was this all about? This was getting the highest number of items ordered. So when I look at the orders over here, I can see 20 was the highest number of um, items ordered. And they want me to put an appropriate lookup function. So this could be VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, XLOOKUP um, to match that with this particular name over here. 
Now this is a four mark question and for this we will be using XLOOKUP, okay? So let's go and do it. Now my first mark is going to come from actually typing this in. And I want to say this, please know how to type out XLOOKUP um, because if you are using Office 2016 and 2019, you will not be able to use this function. It will not come up as you see here. This is Office 365. So I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. But please know how to type it out so that you can still get the marks. Remember, the marks is not based necessarily on the answer, but if your formula is actually correct. So that's where I get one mark. The next one they say um, I need to pop in is my lookup value. We know this from HLOOKUP and VLOOKUP. So we know that I already have this bit of information and I'm using this to go and search for the other name. And I put in my comma, my semicolon, and I'm going to go up and where do I want to go and check for this? Thing? My, my lookup array. Where am I going to have a look? I'm going to have a look in this range over here. F2, whoa, too much f2 to f55 okay that is going to be my lookup array and then my return array in other words what do i want to match this up with what do i want from this and this is going to be in my um, items over here i'm going to highlight all of that and there we can see and now i can close my bracket so i've got my x lookup that's one mark my lookup value is another mark the lookup array, that is another mark, and then my return array. And when I hit enter, there I get my answer. And guys, that is how, I know this is a long video, but that's how we deal with and implement XLOOKUP.